There we go. All right, we're going live. As soon as you show up, we will. All right, we should be live now. Let's just do a reboot on here. All right, all right. All right. You seeing us yet? I think we are up. There we go. Live. All right. It's happening. All right, quick little share here. Took a little while to get up that time. Let's get this up here, entourage. Okay. One more share here. A little while to get up that time. All right. Okay. She's cooperating now. All right, we're up there. We should be good to go. Beautiful. Let me just put this in entrepreneurs too. Wonderful. You got yeah. me good. Probably got my ear. I my got AirPods. you good. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, here we go. All right, we got a lot of sharing out of the way here. Okay. All right. So we're back with another episode of Fire Starts Fire with my good buddy here, James Wilson. Uh, me and James met about a year ago today, roughly, right? We're just about that year mark. Uh, wow. That Million Dollar Mastermind, that was the end of uh, April, a year ago. And that was uh, my first experience uh, with Apex. And uh, I think it was also your first experience with Apex. And uh, Yep. We connected right in the beginning, and uh, similar backgrounds in the HVAC world. And uh, James is a uh, all-around good guy, um, just always a cheerleader for you. Uh, just if you want to get fired up, man, just have a conversation with James. Uh, he's uh, tons of energy, and uh, go-giver, and uh, helps everybody around him. He's just all good people, so I'm excited to have you on the show here. And, uh, yeah, so welcome, welcome to the show, and... Uh, Let's tell us what you got going on. What you been oh, up to? Man. Uh, it's exciting stuff. I appreciate you having me uh, come do this and uh, take the time to let me uh, talk to some of your followers out there and people that are listening. Try and provide a little bit of inspiration in other folks' lives. And so start some fire. Yep. Exactly. Got, got to start, start some fire. that fire. Yep, mm -hmm. that's it. The fire starts fire. That's it. And you think about it, right? You light a match. You put it up next to another match. That match lights and that match lights. And before you know it, the whole box is lit up. Let's go. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you right now, I get so pumped even thinking about how we can help people oh, and yeah. make sure they have better lives. Because that's, that's really my calling, man. It's uh, why I do what I do. I, every day, I take an opportunity to reach out and try and fill everybody's cup up that's around me and see if we can help them grow. Uh, part of the big reason why I wanted to, to finally take the plunge and start my own business was because... I knew that I could build a better culture for the people in our industry that were affected so negatively by terrible leadership and really toxic environment around them. Get your butt in the truck and don't come back until the job's done. We don't care what you think or who you are. Spit them up, you know, just like a gear yep. in a machine. Yep. Gear breaks down, toss them out, put a new guy in there with a set of gauges. Yep, <laughs> you know it. And, it's the same exactly. anywhere you go. It's the same anywhere you go. You know, I, I think a lot of the uh, HVAC businesses that we talk about a lot are started by a guy that was good at HVAC service and knows nothing about business, right? So 
what does he know? He knows, you know, basically, I guess the way he was taught for a million years from his boss that was just cracking the whip and, you know, not taking care of the guys and, you know, like I said, treating the guys like a piece of equipment rather than a, a human. And I think it's big, it, big in the industries and the trades, um, you know, and that, um, you know, basically they were never taught how to run a business and how to treat people and how to manage. And they basically were good at good at service or good at electrical or good at wherever they were good at. And they buy one truck and then they hire a buddy and they buy another truck. Before you know it, they got 50 trucks in a row and they have no business plan, no business experience. And they're, uh, you know, shooting from uh, the hip on a lot of stuff. And uh, I think you see it, I see it, we've all seen it. And it's kind of neat that um, you're jumping in there and, and training and fixing some of those problems. Hey, let's just throw it against the wall and see what sticks. Yeah. Is that's all they're totally. doing? By totally. Totally. Their pants, and and some guys are intuitive enough to figure it out. Some guys want to get better. Some guys want to get more coaching. Whatever their state offers them, past whatever their traditional licensing is. Uh, I've worked and consulted with uh, HVAC, really multiple different service company, uh, just across the country. And man, I can tell you this: the biggest thing is always for me, and I know that you and I share this connection, is that we're second generation guys yes. in service fields. Yep. Your dad, my dad, we came up, and we came up hard, right? Yep. I mean, I'm not putting nothing in your mouth that you haven't told me. Yep. It was get under there, grab that flex, and go get it going, right? Let's go, yeah. We started, I mean, I remember going to work with dad five years old and all the way through, you know, and then every summer, you know, every every weekend, you know, Saturday, you know, dad worked every Saturday. Every Saturday I went to work with dad, and you know, and uh, as I got older and, you know, got home at 3 o'clock in the morning from Friday night, and Six o'clock in the morning, get out of bed, we're going to work. All right, we're going, you know. <laughs> I'm sure you've been there. <laughs> I, 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 I was telling somebody this story the other day. I can remember being a kid. My dad would tell me, hey, pick up that bag of flex. Pick up that bag of flex. You get that bag picked up, you get that flex. Uh, you can't get a check? Okay, next month, next month, next month. Then finally that month came around. Yeah. And I was able, I was so proud. I was like seven years old and I picked up that bag of flex. Next thing he said was, get underneath that house and carry that flex under there. There you go. That was it. From that yeah. point on, I was pulling it. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's all but fun it's until you have to do it for real, you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like mowing the lawn, right? First time you mow the lawn, I'm like, wow, it's really cool mowing the lawn. And then it's like, all right, next week you got to mow the lawn again. And next week and next, before you know it, I'm like, I don't like mowing the lawn. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And, and, and it's tough, but, you know, I, I still think about a lot of that, man. I, I think it helps me that I've got a supreme work ethic because of it. Like, it really did gear me up to go out and win. And one of the big things for my dad was always, you know, you don't leave the job till it's done. Hmm. Yep. You make sure it's all booked up and make sure everything's pinned up. You don't leave stuff laying and doing these things. Yeah, and, clean up your mess you behind know. you. You leave it better than you found it. I hate that when you go to a job site and there's debris laying everywhere. And it's like, go up in the attic and all the extra flex and boxes, all that up in the attic. They didn't clean their mess up. It's like, yeah, don't don't work like that. Man, you think about it. My dad was definitely not a Boy Scout. He did heat and air conditioning in the 70s and 80s. He had a good time. Yeah. But he would always say, hey, it's just like the Boy Scouts. You leave your campsite cleaner than you found. Exactly. You make sure nobody's going to walk through here and say, you know, those Wilsons did a bad job cleaning this mess up. Yep. Just like you, ah, those Lewis guys, they did a terrible job. They, yep. We don't even want them to come back out on this side. Yep. You know how it goes. Oh, but yeah. But for, for me, it's just one of those situations I uh I did sales for a really long time after helping and uh, doing that. I was in a lot of different positions. I was in marketing for about six years, and I was successful in that. I was very fortunate, especially after uh, everything happened in 2008. I was able to pick up, and I just kept going from job to job. Uh, that gave me the opportunity to earn more. Hmm. Uh, pretty much, I went through a struggle there in 09 and really the first part of 10, but uh, it picked back up again, and I made the most of it. But it always took me back to uh, how I could help people and what I was doing. And sales, fundamentally, I, I do great at it, and I am good at it, teaching it. But it's what else can I give with that to help people get what they need? And, you know, that's why I've been so big on core values, even before our time here, uh, getting to know each other through Apex and what we've done through that mastermind group. I can say that without a shadow of a doubt, it's always been the driving force for me to make sure that no matter what I did, even if I was working for someone, I would have to make sure that my team's values align with mine as a leader, no yep. matter what, because yep. I wouldn't work somewhere that was shady to a point and uh, not allowing me to do that. Um, 
But for me, if you're not leading in that way, then you might as well sit at home and find something else to do. Yeah, well, so it was very successful from that. You're probably much like me. It's, you know, family business, family name on the line. You know, if the guys that go out to represent me personally, I take it personal. If they mess something up and they leave a mess behind, that's that's representing me. And I don't, you know, I don't work that, that way. So it's really important to me that, like, you know, they do the right thing. And like I said, the reputation is everything. And that, you know, I want to be able to sleep at night knowing that we did the best job we could do and, and help people to the best of our ability, right? I can say yes. And I can say this. I can remember... Uh, I was 14, and it was my first real summer working for my dad. Hmm. As far as, listen, you're, you're pretty much going to be the, the full on helper for this job. Yeah. Not with him, not with figuring this out. He's like, no, you're going you're with up. this guy. Yeah. You're up. You yeah. got to make sure that all these things are done that I've been talking about for this whole time, whatever. And man, it was just like that. And I can remember I finished up and things were going well, but my dad and I were riding together. And he was talking to me about pricing for something. Oh, I'm going to do this, and we're going to put this out. It was for a service call fee. And uh, $69, whatever. This is in the 90s, whatever. But I, I just kind of mentioned to him, I said, you know, I just heard on the radio that somebody's doing them for $79. Don't you think that that would be worth an extra $10? And he told me that day, he said, listen, one day you can own your own heat and air company, and you can do whatever the heck you want to. But until that day, you can shut up. And wait until I tell you what I'm going to do. <laughs> Swear to God, bro. Yep, That's yep. exactly how he told it to me. Yep. Man, that might be the most motivating thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Yep, yep. And from that point on, I said, I'm going to dedicate my life to learning how businesses operate to make sure that one day when I finally take that plunge, I will know more about how to operate a business than the next person beside me, yep. at least on the service level. Uh, and, and it's worked. I mean, man, I took positions with companies where I could take sales jobs to get better because that was my bread and butter. But <clears throat> going into marketing, learning how those facets work, whether it was uh, out of home or ad agency stuff, I ran an SEO scrum team. I was the VP of a software company for uh, right over a year and a half, right under a year and a half, excuse me. And then uh, I actually went to work with the factory side. Uh, I worked with uh, Reem and Rude. I was a territory manager for a supply house distributor out here. And then uh, after that, I actually went to work for Carrier for a little while. Okay. And I worked for CE and those guys and worked. But my whole job was to teach the contractor how to run a better heating hmm. and air company so they buy more stuff from them. Yeah. The long and the Makes short, sense. they're doing yeah. a bad job. They gotta, they're going to go out of business. They're not buying from me. So what do I got to do? Teach hmm. them. Sales 101, right? You solve problems. So whether you're selling to the, to the end user, to the client, you're solving their yes. problems. You know, they're hot. You got to give them AC. Now, if you're selling to your your contractors, what problems they have? They are then they need marketing help. They need management help. The more work they can do, the more the more you can sell to them. So it's a, you know, still solving problems. You know, it's uh, oh. that's what good salespeople do, right? They figure out the problems and they solve them. Yeah, and, and you know, but you know, you've seen in different areas. I know it's different in New York, but especially down here, there's so many guys that get their license and they're just out there trying to do their thing. You don't have to have, you know, there's no. Uh, I know you guys up there, you got the unions and everything. And I mean, it, for down here, though, it's the wild, wild west sometimes, you know? It you is know, here in the, uh, years. In, the, in the residential, you know, world, like outside of New York City. It's, it's really? all guys, you know, you guys working out of the trunk of their car type thing versus guys that have shops and trucks. And, you know, the customers, oh, I can get it for $1,000 cheaper. And I was like, from who? And the guy out of the back of his van. I was all right, so when it doesn't work a year from now, who are you going to call, you know? It's uh, you know, but oh, I saved a thousand bucks. But yeah, well, that thousand bucks gonna cost you when I gotta redo the whole system because he did it wrong, you know. And, and it's happened multiple times, I'm sure, in your world too. That people call you back. Oh, you know, could you come fix my AC? What happened to the last guy? Oh, he's not calling me back. <laughs> you you know, it's funny. There's three guys. You know those three guys? It's Chuck in his truck. It's Stan in his van, <laughs> and it's Mike on a bike. <laughs> That's it. That's the real discount. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Don't well, worry, don't worry. I'll fit that whole package unit on the back of this bike. That's it, that's it. Oh, we got Nicole on here. All right, so <laughs> for someone new to HVAC sales, where would be a good place to find industry industry specific tips and training? For someone new in HVAC sales. For me, it's always a good way to start by looking at who your distributors are, working closely with your territory managers or your area manager for that. Uh, build a real good rapport with those individuals and see where you can benefit the most. Uh, I can tell you now from being on that side, 
I I gained a lot of knowledge from my team. And now he's he's actually I consider him a partner in my business. We do great things together. But he'll actually come in and do trainings for my staff. Mm-hmm. We'll do sales trainings because they are the resource. No matter what, they're the closest you're going to get to the factory until you grow up to a certain level. So if you're not using them early and often, then you're probably kind of failing yourself. Also, look at some tricks for that. But uh, for me, you know, that's really the basis now for my job. Uh, we've actually just hired a new, uh, pretty pretty much a general manager. We, we're still shopping the name, the general manager title, because we're trying to remove manager and employee from all of our vernacular. For I like that. I like that. It's going to either be team leader or team manager. But uh, I think we kind of settled on uh, director of uh, like of ops for this gentleman, and uh, he's doing a great job. But the reason for that is is because currently we're looking at putting an office in Myrtle Beach, and then we've got some other projects, so we're going to be looking at growing to a second location. Nice. Uh, for me, though, I get the ability to where pretty much my whole focus is turned to nothing but shooting videos. I'm putting SOPs on video for every practice that my team has at Eco Green Home Services and putting together sales training videos that I can share with others to help them grow. Yep, that's it. That's how you scale, right? You got well, yeah. it, it's like McDonald's, right? You figure it out one time and you times it by how many thousand, you know, it's you know, but if you document that one time that works really well, then you can duplicate it. If you if you don't have the, the system you can't teach someone else how to do it if you know how to do it yourself, in other words. Which is uh a lot, a lot of problems that everyone pe- people have, right? Definitely, and you know, if uh, and I know you've got someone that's asking these questions, Brian. I would say too, the first thing I would work on uh, is knowing how your layout goes. And for me, it's very simple. It goes everything starts with the phone call coming in, but if you're a new salesperson or comfort consultant that's going to be working in the area, uh, I always say the first thing is to step in and check in what game you're playing. There are so many different games and services. Uh, I liken it to the fact that if you think about it, uh, LeBron James might be the best basketball player in the world right now, but he would be a pretty good soccer player, maybe a decent football player. He might be a bad baseball player, but he knows that his game is basketball, right? So what is your game? What are you good at? And that's why I say, are you a residential add on replacement only person? Are you a residential new construction salesperson? Are you in commercial? Do you do only swap outs for light commercial? All very different. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because, I mean, you think about it. I, and I've taught this side of it for years. Is Do you know what the fastest way to be that statistic that's done with your business in 23 months is? To be HVAC is the second highest failure rate in the entire nation for uh-huh. businesses after restaurants. Wow. I didn't know that. Think about that's that. That's wild. Oh. Because yeah, yeah. they're all, you got guys that think, hey, man, I got my gauges, I got my stuff. Yeah, I can start I'm a business. Yeah. The back yeah. of this van. Yeah. And that's where they go. Yeah. But for me, it's just, again, making sure you know what game you're playing, and then you can figure out exactly where to go from there. Uh, I do actually got videos that uh, I guess I can post them to you, Brian, and you can put them out there if somebody wants to look at them. But uh, I've got some stuff already just about how setting the agenda works. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in the off principle, especially for. Uh, any type of add-on replacement, whether that be uh, residential or commercial, uh, that's options, financing, and follow-up. If you're not uh, working on the off method, then you're probably going to have your sales off. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, even just the way. Uh, so we had we had fun one time. We had we recorded the uh, conversations that the uh, people that are answering the phone were having with customers, and they weren't trained properly to answer the phone, basically, and they were driving away business. Just by the way they were answering the phone and people were asking questions, they didn't know the right answers. So I think it's really important <laughs> to make sure that your full staff knows what's going on. Like someone asks a question and they have no idea, do you, you know, do you do this? And they're like, oh no, I don't think we do this. And they're like, hey, do we do this? Like, what does that say to your customer when you know your your person, your first person that you're talking to doesn't know what you do or where you know? So I think it's really important that a lot of the stuff gets overlooked. You know, someone answering the phone is really important because they're the first point of contact. Oh. It's it's game changing. We yeah. have questions that we have to ask. It doesn't matter. And most people are thinking, oh, you're talking about uh, what's the name of the customer, where they live, what's their phone yeah. number, what's their email address. Yeah. I got it. It's yeah. okay. Once we get that, ah, don't worry about yeah. it. We're going to be there sometime today. 
we're good to go. Yep. Thank you very much for calling. Like, yeah. uh, uh, it's over. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. When you, you have already yep. built negative dang value yep. on your business, and what are you going to do when your guy shows up out there to help that customer, and they say, "Well, you know, they were kind of short with me on the phone." Yep. Yep. Oh, really? Well, I'm I, I'm sorry. Maybe I yeah. can help. You. You know what? Do you want to go look at the problem? Yes or no? Yeah, it's and like, that goes for any service. Yeah, it business. sets the tone. Yep. Man, currently, right now, I, my business, we own a heating and air, we own a plumbing, we own an electrical, and we own uh, insulation business. Uh, our insulation side is going live uh, next Monday. We just procured the equipment to start our insulation division, and we went through the first round of hirings. But previous to that, we started plumbing back last year in uh, July or excuse me, uh, last week of June. And then we had started electrical at HVAC in January. But I didn't start the business until December the 27th. Mm. I quit a very lucrative job. I was pretty much running all the HVAC uh, for a very large heating and air conditioning company in the Charlotte market. Uh, I was the HVAC manager. Uh, and man, I'll tell you, uh, it was scary to make that transition. Mm. But when I did it, I said, hey, you know, here's what we're going to do. We're going to see what we can do. I got a business partner that's with me on this and uh, he's over the electrical side and we took $2,800 and we turned it into 1.1 million in our wow. first year. Awesome. Give you a little, that's how it's Thank done. You. That's how it's done. Thank you, man. That's Thank how it's you. done. That's when you put your systems in, in order and, and, and knowing you trade. Um, I mean, that's a big thing. No, you know, as a salesperson, like I said, there's free training. Every supply house gives training on their product, right? A lot of people are too lazy yes. to go. Learn your product. Learn so when a customer asks you, "Hey, I just heard about this Mitsubishi split system. Uh, what do you know about it?" Oh, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? It's what you're selling me. Like you know, you got to know all the details, and and you got to be up on your product. And you know, uh, like I said, it's the confidence that that sells jobs. When you're confident in your product, you're confident in your abilities and your your company's abilities, and you and you're able to talk nice on the phone and and, and set the tone in the right way. Then it becomes, yeah. I don't say it becomes easy, really. It just becomes, it's what people want. You give them what they want. They want, someone who knows what they're talking about. They want someone's going to show up, that someone's going to be nice to them, and someone's going to charge them a fair price. You meet all those that's criterias, it. that's it. Business is easy after that. We make it harder and, than it really and, needs to be. And people get a block. It's always a block. They either don't want to ask for the sale, or they don't want to go through the steps, or they don't want to make sure the customer's happy. All those things, are you just going through the process? Yeah. It's it. You have to do it. And, you know, I don't mind going through uh, my sales process here and the folks that are listening can use it, go through whatever they want to. But I'll be glad if you want, Brian, I can uh, give out my information Definitely. at james.wilson, uh, james.wilson at ecogreenhomeservices.com. You can shoot me an email with any questions. I don't mind helping anybody. Uh, I've got some different levels of training that I can maybe get you through, whether that's HVAC, plumbing, electrical, roofing. Uh, I know that market as far as home services from top to bottom and i think that we can help some people but as far as that process and what you said from the phone call we make sure in our office not only are we getting the pertinent information we let them know hey we need to know where you want us to park we need to know like if you have pets in your home we need to know if you've got active seniors in your home we get that information before we even go out. I like it. Doesn't matter. Those are three questions that are always asked now. We've just added asking about active seniors. You want to know why? Because even if they are active and they're seniors, they have medical issues sometimes, and we don't want them wandering out of the house. Yep. Yep. I tell this to my guys every day. You know why we ask about pets? Have you ever chased a labradoodle down in a thunderstorm for 45 minutes in the middle of a, of a community? Yep, yep. That happens. I've I've done it. Nobody yeah. told me the dog was there. You open I the door, sure dog runs out. Yep. Dog runs out. Yeah. I'm a big guy. You should have seen me running. <laughs> I was Superman. I stopped the Amazon truck. I put my hand up. The Amazon truck stopped. Here comes the dog running right by me again. <laughs> yeah. That's what we do though, right? But it's good That's to right. know that. Like, hey, listen, there's a dog that might run out. Be aware of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's good. And then where to park? You want to talk about ending a sales conversation? This is the biggest one. You want to end the sales conversation? Block the wife in when she's got to go pick the kids up from karate. Yeah. yeah. You, well, 
Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Might as might as well say it's all over. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate the time. It's Thank 100%. you so much. Your house was lovely, but I'm just going to go ahead and throw a number out in the air because you're never going to buy from me when I yeah. move this truck. I'm not coming back in here to yeah. close this down. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. You stopped it. Yeah, you, you so, stopped your own yeah. your own sale, yeah, because you had to stop the flow and go move your truck, and yeah, now she's all mad because she's late for the kids, and now he's mad because she's mad, and then, you know, yep, yeah, I've had it happen. Yeah. So, so if you think about it like this, it's it's a situation to where you're really just helping the customer. You're asking them questions back. I mm-hmm. mean, because you want to confirm this. Hi, this, I'm James Wilson with Eco Green Home Services. This is the call that I make. I'm hi, I'm James Wilson with Eco Green Home Services. Always smile. Yeah. People can tell when you're smiling oh, yeah. on the phone. Yep. I had a boss when I did inside sales. He told me that he said, "Man, don't ever forget this." They could see that smile through the phone, and I thought, "Bull crap." They cannot see this smile through the phone, but he was right. Yeah. He In can. general, if you're positive and happy when yeah. you're making the call, customers feel on that energy. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, baby. We oh, need yeah. it. Yep. We want you. We need you coming down here. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we ask them. But, but we, so am I speaking with Brian? That's yep. all you say? Am I speaking yep. with Brian? Yep. Oh, yeah. That, Brian, nice, nice. Yep. So yep. Brian Lewis, right? Yep. That's me. Boom. Well, we've already got the first one. Yep. They said yes. Yep. How can we help them now? Yep. That's yep. it. Yep. We're like friends. It. Yeah, that's it. Build, I mean, the, that's it. build the report, build the relationships. You know, my my thing over my head over here, right? Real estate built on relationships. And right. you know what? You're dealing with people's like most prized possession. It's the, the, probably the biggest investment that they have is their home. It's where they've raised their kids or are going to raise their kids. It's where they eat, sleep, and hang out and have every holiday and this and that. It's not just, yes. uh, it's not a wooden box. It's it's a member of their family. You need to treat it as such and, and build the relationships and, and understand that you care about, you're not there just to make a buck. You're there to help them either sell their house, buy their house, you know, up, up sell, down sell, you know, whatever. It's, uh, but you gotta understand it's, it's, it's more than just a structure. And it's the same thing yeah. uh, with AC, you know? It's the American dream. Yeah. It truly is. It's the American dream. I'm going to own a house. I'm going to yep. own a piece of land. This is mine. Yep. This is what I bust my butt for. And usually 40% of what I bring home, of what I bring home, goes to pay for this thing. Yep. In some way, shape, or form, when you're talking about your insurance and your taxes and everything adding up, you probably got 40% in your home after everything. Yeah. Yeah, if you made a pie chart of your of your your life, what part of that pie chart is your house? I mean, exactly. working, time spent there. I mean, it's a big piece of the pie, you know, Yes. related to You're your house. Over. You know, and then obviously as you come in with a service and now you make a mess at their house because whatever you left garbage behind, now you're disrespecting a member of their family. You know what I mean? So it's it's really, it's more than just, I just put this piece of equipment in. You're, you're They're allowing you to come into their house and you're trying to make their life better and if you make something dirty and leave garbage behind and you know piss off the neighbors and whatever other nonsense that goes on it's a lose you know so and a lot of guys aren't looking at the full picture of that and i think it's really important uh when you're working around someone's home to understand how important that home is to them you know, you know me pretty well now Definitely. i'm one of the most easygoing guys in the entire world and I don't feel like I'm just saying that. People will tell you, I'm yeah. just, I have a good time. Yep. I take care of the people around me. I always want to help you. Man, you know what burns me up? Leaving a mess at somebody's house. It is the one thing that I cannot abide. And I will tell you now, everybody gets one shot. Yep. If you mess up, you've got to go. Yep. Because our core values at my office are four E's. The four E's of success for Eco Green are I'm always early. I am always efficient, I am always ethical, and I am always exceptional. And I'll tell you right now, you cannot be exceptional when you leave plaster laying on somebody's floor or there's little pieces of insulation that fell down from the attic because you didn't take the time to clean up before you left that person's house. There is nothing that separates my company from the next company or the next company except for the value that we build in to make sure that we are the best every time we're out there. And if I got to look up and see that you left screws out of a filter rack or you didn't put the the piping covers back over on the water heater, well, you know what? You just killed the value. Get out. Yep. Uh, Yep. 100%. 
hundred percent. I'm serious. My dad said it all the time. You know, you can get air conditioner from anywhere. You, you know, you can get anyone to make, put a unit in there, make your make your house cold, make your house warm, whatever it is. There's a thousand guys that do it. What's the difference? People want to deal with you, right? Make them want to deal with you. Make give the value. You know, let them trust you. Let them know that you're going to do the right job. Let them know that you're going to be there in a year or two from now if something goes wrong. That you know you're going to stand behind your product and your installation. You know, and that's that's the only way you can set yourself apart. And you've said in the real estate world, what can I do? There's a thousand real, tens of thousands of realtors out there. What can I do? I help them. I go be up and beyond. You know, I've. I've been at houses at two o'clock in the morning cleaning the house out because the closing is the next morning, and they're doing the walkthrough, and the house is still full of crap. I mean, I've literally right. two o'clock in the morning. I was with one of the homeowners, literally carrying stuff out to the curb with him to empty the house out so we could close the next morning. I mean, that's the stuff that I do. That I didn't have to do that, but you know what? Listen, he was stuck. He had someone who was supposed to come help him. They didn't help. Next thing you know, here I am. Shh, let's go. Let's get this done tonight. Um, you know, and that's the stuff that we do above and beyond. You know, like. Well, and, and and you say that, man, and you know what? That's that's the good stuff inside you, because yep. that's you being exceptional, right? Yep. That's you making sure that you're out there ready to go get it. We do Let's what it takes. Go. We do what it takes to help right. our people. Yeah. Oh. You yeah. working with me? I do whatever it takes to help you. Yeah. Man, I had a woman tell me that she bought she was buying a system for me one time, and that the next day was her birthday. And she made a joke about it, and she said, you know, I never get anything for my birthday, and I'm just glad I'm going to have it. <laughs> Man, we came back. I had my guys ready. I had them go, and everything set to go in the next day. I literally bought this woman a cookie cake, <laughs> and we recorded it. And we said, awesome. and my whole team. <laughs> That's there. awesome. I love and it. we sang happy birthday to this lady. I love it. Blow the candles out the whole thing. And she talked about that for months. Every time that she got on Facebook, huh? she if somebody would say how great a service they got somewhere, this lady literally would take screenshots and send it to me. That's awesome. Where she said, oh, yeah, but I bet you they didn't bring you a cake in, uh, for your yeah. birthday. Yeah. You know, that that you know it's fun to do that, right? And we help people. The side effect of that is the organic marketing that goes with that. You, you yeah. can't pay for that kind of advertising for someone to say, hey, they did my house. They were awesome. They should do your house, too. And that's really your goal. Like, you want all your clients to say, that's the most awesome person I've ever dealt with. You have to use them, right? You can't buy that. You can't get all the marketing in the world, all that. And how do you get that? You take care of people. You, you know, you make them feel good. Make them feel happy. Make them feel satisfied. And, you know, have some fun in the process. Like I said, bringing cake, that's awesome. I love that story. It's so cool. You know, and it's like you're having fun, right? Everyone, All the guys thought it was fun. Everyone had birthday cake, whatever. Like, they, you know, the guys enjoyed it too. It's fun. It's fun to see people smile, right? You want people to be happy. We all want to be happy, right? Tell you this last week when I did my sales meeting for my team, I said, You guys think about it. The real tragedy in this person's life right now is that most people, I think it's like 83% of people, don't have more than $500 in their savings. Yeah, think about that. Yeah, yeah. The most expensive thing that you're going to buy for your house now, period, is an air conditioning system. It is the most expensive thing you're going to put into your house. Yeah, even even now, we're talking about water heaters standard residential water heaters with all these supply chain issues they're going for about a thousand dollars now yeah we're putting them in for three thousand bucks yeah. because we have to yeah. you know yeah but the thing is is that the value in my guys putting it in with them getting it lined up with making sure that we're going to get the rebates covered all these things it's there yeah. but in the end i'm walking into brian lewis's house and we're talking about this and he knows that he is about to spend money on something that he, A, has to have, but B, has no idea how he's going to pay for it. And probably was a surprise. You don't expect it to break. You don't expect it to start leaking. Next thing you know, like, you know, you're living paycheck to paycheck, and all of a sudden the hot water heat is leaking all over the floor. And you're like, ah, uh, what do I do now? You know? What do I do now? And it's uh, two weeks before Christmas, and I still got to buy the kids presents and all the other stuff that goes on. It's like... Yeah, that's usually when stuff like that goes, right? And we see it. People struggling, right? A lot of them, most of the world's struggling. I'm financing about 85% of my wow. jobs now. Yeah. So we have six different financing options. Who, whoever that was was asking about a career in HVAC. Make sure whoever you're working for, if they're doing it, they need to find out about financing options. 
If you want, I'll get my email out earlier. They can reach out to me. If they want to learn about how to do financing sales, yep. it's a class that I teach is financing sales because if you don't have financing sales, then you might as well give it up. Yep. Because they're already talking about for the HVAC side that in October, they're changing the EPA again, or the, uh, excuse me, the Department of Energy is changing the SEER ratings again. Yep. They're going to get rid of SEER. It's going to be SEER 2. We're talking about system prices going up 30%. Yeah. On top of the shortage, the, the shortage pricing that's seven, up now. Oh, if we, you, we're getting another seven uh, percent next in yeah, two weeks, May first, yeah. seven percent more. Yeah, it's I mean, coming. I mean, just just right. just metal alone is is over double in price. We're talking about a thirty percent shift, man. That yeah. means that that's that first system that you got put in the lowest end, it's going to go from being seven, eight, nine thousand, depending on where you're at, six thousand in some cases, but it's going to be. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars. Yep. That's a yeah. huge a jump. Huge jump, yeah. And it's it's really a luxury yeah. item for the most. You know, you're down south, so it's a little hotter. Up here in New York, it's kind of a luxury item. You know, three, four months a year using AC, so you can go buy you know two hundred dollar window units and stick them in the bedroom and and deal with that. You know, put one in your den and one in your bedroom, keep the door closed, and survive in those two rooms. Or you could spend, you know, fifteen grand and put central air in the house. You know, what are you going to do if you're on a small, you know, on a tight budget? You're going to go buy some window units or garage sale units. And you're going to stick them in the window, and you're going to huddle in that one or two rooms that has air conditioning, and you're going to make it through the summer. You know, um, so when the economy squeezes, you know, we all feel it because it really is a luxury item. I mean, it's once you've had central air, you won't go back. But if you've never had central air, especially up here in the Northeast, it's a little. You know, down down south, pretty much everyone has AC. It just they do, right? For the most part. Yeah. Um. You know, up north, it's you know, again, it's a luxury thing because you know, our summers are short. You know, we, Memorial Day to Labor Day is basically our our summer up here. So, it's uh, man. If you don't if you don't have AC in the south, the only reason you don't have it is because you cannot find a way to get it financed. Yep. Yeah. And that's a hundred. That's yeah. the most accurate yeah, thing yeah. I can tell you. Yeah. Man, it it was it was eighty two degrees yesterday on Easter. We had two days of overcast. Man, let me tell you something. In two weeks, we're going to be flirting with eighty-nine degree days. Yeah, yeah, we're it's only in, we're only in the fifties here, so we got natural cooling now. <laughs> See, but that goes vice versa with you. I mean, what would you guys do without heating up there? Yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah, we need real heat. I mean, My heat's on right now. It's forty degrees out. You know, right? Yeah, yeah, yep. we're, we're chilling. Man. It's sixty degrees oh, outside man. right now. <laughs> Don't rub it in. Don't rub it I'm in. Telling you. <laughs> Yeah. You need to get on that bike. Start That's riding it. down here. Yeah, I'll ride down there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about it. I rode down by the beach today, and it was 40 degrees and windy, and, you know, sun was out, yes. was in, and it was uh, it was, it was was a tough ride. It was cold. But uh, we're almost done with that journey. We're, uh, I don't know, about 45 days out, something like that. Really? From the 365-day journey. Yeah. So. Man, that's amazing. Yeah. 45 more days. Yeah, it's about, you know, 320-something today. Yeah, do you regret starting it when it was warm? Um, it, the winter got hard. The winter got hard. Even still, it's still when it's cold days. I come back. Even yeah, you know, I rode today and it was in the forties, but uh, wind burn and my my you know, joints hurt. And by the time I get back, it takes me an hour or two to thaw out. And you know, the exercise is great. I love the fresh air. I love being outside. But it uh, the cold air just hurts. I mean, it literally it's just like I said. I know I, as I get older, my hands like you know they don't work anymore for an hour or two after. <laughs> you know, it's like. You know, it's like they're frozen, but um, but in the warm weather, it's awesome. You know, I've met a bunch of people along the journey. Um, obviously, message every day on the, along the journey. I've touched a lot of people. A lot of people follow me, reach out. I go places. I'm riding my bike in town, and people honk and wave at me now and stuff. It's like it's right kind on. of fun. You know, it's kind of fun. Yeah, you know, listen, do something big, right? Do something different. You know, help people. You know, why do I do it? I do it for myself, obviously, to keep myself accountable and try and keep myself in shape. Uh, and the messages I do are, are a lot of them I'm talking to myself out loud trying to make the message stick but uh, but it, it, I've touched a lot of people and it's kind of fun you know I know if I can help one person a day 365 people I helped this year you know get out of their funk you know do a little bit better try a little bit harder inspire them to go out and ride and walk and whatever else like people text me I'm, I went out and ran today because you you make me feel bad I'm you know you're on your bike every day and I'm making excuses why I can't go out and jog or go out on my bike and you know, so it's cool, you know, if I can get a couple people in shape and change their lives a little bit, that's what we do, right? We try and fire, start the fire. Fire starts fire, as we say, right? <laughs> so we're starting fires every day. That's right. Yep, every right. day we're starting fires. 
your next one should be we Uber at dusk. Yeah. And that's where you take an Uber to go and work out. Yeah. And you talk about it from there. Some from friends wanted to do, uh, you know, they were going to make up shirts. Uh, he rides at dawn and we drink at dusk. And you know, like, that's, that's the one. like, we're going to have some shirts made up. We're drinking at dusk. So uh, I'm actually trying to figure out um, Wounded Warriors is doing this fundraiser thing. Uh, ride your bike 300 miles in 30 days as a fundraiser. So actually I'm coming up and I think I'm going to try and close it out with that. Register for that and do a fundraiser and see if I can make some money for... Uh, Wounded Warriors, at least I close it out with a cause. It's just, uh, you know, listen, give back even more if we can. I'm doing it right, might as well see if we can get some money for it. So, you know, help some uh, man, I tell you, veterans. We, we, owe, we owe a lot to our vets, man. I, no, I'm I don't trying, know how uh, they do it. I don't know how they do it, man. God bless for, them all. For me, I, 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 I stop. And I, it's funny, I was in the parking lot at a local grocery yesterday. It was Easter guy comes up in a 67 uh, Mustang nice done the work on it got out he was definitely wearing his uh, marine hat and he and I talked for a few minutes and uh, he's still a young guy you know we just really hashed out for a few minutes he started a construction company and I told him I said look man you you don't know how much I appreciate the freedom that you provide me give me a call anytime I gave yeah. him my QR code he took my card took my information I said listen I'll be glad to pour it in your cup try and help your business grow whatever his, his uh, awesome. name was uh, mr williams good guy and uh he said he would and you know what i know this guy's gonna reach out because a lot of them do but if there's a way that i can help him put a little bit more food on his plate yep. and his business partner's plates man i've already accomplished a lot you know yeah i got a bunch of friends that are uh, you know in the service and the stories they tell and you know just picking up and leaving their family and bouncing their family from Every two years, a new station bouncing from here across the country, you know, overseas, and you know, kids growing up, you know, getting pulled out of school every two years, and I mean, it's it's a rough life. On top of you know, being away for holidays, being away from your kids being born, I mean, all this, I don't know how to do it. I mean, again, you're risking your life. On top of all that stuff, you're putting your life in danger. So, I mean, God bless everyone that serves. It's really, really noble cause. You, you know me, and we, we've talked about this before. I, I hate politics. I think it's the biggest waste oh, yeah. of time in America now and the world and yep. we've just got so much infighting doesn't matter who you believe or what you believe or where it yep. at I, I'm, I'm of the opinion of those people are in a position where they don't want to help us period yeah they have to help themselves with all that, doesn't matter left uh, left or right they're helping themselves that's exactly right yep. and i always preface that by saying you know we still live in a country though that no matter what anybody says or anybody thinks we don't wake up being afraid that bombs are going to hit our house yes and if you think about it like that yeah. and what yeah. our veterans do for us and our active military do for us every day, man, that's some pretty powerful stuff. It is. It because is. Because you can it look is. at what's going on in Ukraine, oh, you know, what yeah. happened in Afghanistan, oh, Iraq. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Israel, Iran, anywhere that's out there. They did the stuff in Bosnia. They've done stuff all across the world. Yeah. And those people get up still have PTSD, shock oh, yeah. and terror because yeah. somebody did this to them. Yep. Yeah. You're not supposed to see stuff like that. I mean, the stories, I've, I've even seen pictures that some of these guys had, and I'm like, you know, you're not supposed to see that stuff. That's not stuff people are supposed to see, you know. And, uh, you know, they do it, and they and they come home, and then they, uh, you know, they put it they put it away, and they live a normal life here, you know, the wife and kids and the, the picket fence and all that stuff. But, you know, when they go to bed at night, you know, uh, you know, that stuff doesn't get out of your brain. So, uh, you know, I said, God bless them all. It's, uh, you know, I said Anyone out here that's a veteran, obviously we're on both of us here. Any help you ever need, reach out because uh, we appreciate what you do for our country. Yes, thank you so much. Feel free to contact me, and I know yeah. uh, I'm going to make sure Brian puts my information and everything. And yeah. I gave my email out earlier, but we'll make sure that uh, if you're looking to move, if you're looking to be in this area or the Myrtle Beach area, you're yeah. looking for a job and you're a vet, call me. I don't mind talking to you about it. I hire veterans every day. Uh, one of the leaders in my plumbing department, he is uh, – former uh, marine and then we've got uh, some folks that are there that have uh, been army and then air force uh just in this time we're not breaking records or anything uh, i guess technically we did we did a million dollars in our first year doing aor yeah, but that works yeah. i guess we were i guess we did yeah. do a pretty good yeah, yeah. breaking year but it is what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah so with that being said we're we are growing our team out to where we're at uh we're at 16 team members right now, but we're growing continuously. That's awesome. And uh, we'd love to have any other vets that want to come down. I say that about our veterans and then our uh, uh, folks that are still active military. But when COVID started, I had this idea that, it, to me, frontline responders 
educators, uh, whether it be uh, our boys in blue or ladies in blue, uh, someone that's a, a EMT or a firefighter, and then again back to those educators and the vets. Uh, those individuals they get ten percent off of all of our services. Yeah, and we don't really advertise that. We've talked about it. I didn't want it to be something that was just thrown out there and people say, hey, you know, maybe they're doing this. But I had a veteran approach me a couple weeks ago and say, man, why are you not advertising this? Yeah. He said, my, yeah. my wife's a teacher. I serve. He said, you should tell everybody you do this because, man, you deserve people to know that you yeah. just go ahead and say, all right, back. 10% yeah. off anything you want. Yep. So it's a, it's a big thing. We, we try to make sure that those people that struggle, we, we take care of them. Yep, yep. No, definitely. It's uh. They said they give so much, and then uh, you know they don't get paid squat for what they do. I mean, and that actually goes for everyone, you know, for for you know EMTs that are that are we're dealing with all this stuff, and, uh, and teachers that you know deal with the kids, and um, you know there's a lot of, a lot of people do a lot of work for pennies out in this world, and uh, you know they're uh, they're good souls for it, so we appreciate them. Man, we we better be glad we got teachers that stuck around after COVID, but they had yeah. to go back to the schools and doing everything. Yeah, yeah. I we, mean, we went through some bad lots stuff. Lots of people yeah. just bounced out of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, a lot of a lot of, lot of police force bailed, and when they were doing the COVID mandates for the shots, a lot of people retired, and even in the military. I, I know. Uh, I was at my buddy's uh, Marine retirement party, and um, a couple guys there were, were were putting their papers in because they weren't getting the shot. And I was like, you, we're really losing guys that are ready to fight for our country because you're making them get a shot. Talk about politics. Like, oh, you know, like, stop. You know. And then now they're waving it and stuff. So now it's like, all right, so now we lost these guys and now it's just a mess. <laughs> it's a real mess. Well, I guess you can look at it on the bright side. Maybe they weeded out those that weren't dedicated enough. I guess, I guess, yeah. Just try. I'm, yeah. I'm always going to look at the, the positive. Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe those guys are ready to get out of there anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I don't yeah. know. I yeah. don't really see it like that, but hey, yeah, you know, yeah. where, where's the silver lining? In yeah, thing? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, silver lining is I think we're hopefully not going to get done with this COVID shit, and we can get our lives oh, back man. together. But now, with, you know, so. interest rates. I looked today, thirty-year interest rate, six point eight percent. Did it go ad. up today? Yeah, six point eight as of today. That's freaking nuts. They were two something like not even a year ago. I mean, uh, it's going to paralyze the world. But well, that was that was where it was at in the early nineties. Yeah, you know, that, hasn't been that high in hasn't house. been that high in a long time. And we have a huge yeah. supply and demand problem. I, don't, I imagine it's the same down there. And um, I don't know, maybe it'll slow that down a little bit. But I mean, I just did a house. Uh, I put it up for six ninety nine. A week later, we sold it for seven eighty five. Week. Right on. Right. I mean, that's the kind of market we had. Like Thirty people through the open house, and I mean, just. You know, wild. But now the rates are, you know, people aren't going to be throwing that money around like that when the rates are getting higher. Right. So. And then, but we say that. Yeah, but they're still we doing it. That. We're still doing it. Yeah. Exactly. This just happened last week. The rates are high, yeah. But. Just another blip in the road. Yeah, yeah. Ho ho hopefully it don't hit 8%. This market actually has been crazy because everything that we think is going to mess the market up doesn't. <laughs> so it's. I don't know. Yeah. We'll keep doing it while we're doing it. I mean, we're still selling houses every day. and I got a million two one I just put up. We're doing pictures tomorrow on that one. We're open house this Saturday. So, um, yeah. And it's, I already got people knocking on my door, basically. They want to see it. And I, you know, I'm not showing you any other pictures. Call me. When can I see it? When can I see it? When can I get in? A million two when they're fighting to look at it. So, it's a good place to be. Yeah. I'm, and, and for me, uh, I'm trying to decide if I want to put my place up. You know, we're talking about getting that done, and uh, man, that's just something I'm probably going to talk to you a little bit more one-on-one yeah, about. I just, yeah. I, I really don't know if it's worth it, and you know, probably where you're going to go. Yeah, that's that's what it comes down to. If you have a place to go, you know, if you're going to sell yeah. high to buy high, it doesn't really make sense. If you're selling high to do something different, or you know, it's uh, you know, it makes a little bit of sense. But um, well, I mean, if they stay where they're at. You can eat rent for a year and enjoy it and see what happens. You really just had your bets and see them. But I know yeah. this. I don't know that I'll get the same value out of my house in another year that I can get from now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. are we coming to the end and what's that even look like? Yeah, it's hard to say. Just when you think it's it's as high as it's going to go, it goes higher. I mean, like, I thought the market was slowing down. Like I said, I just went 86000 over asking price. And I, I priced it at market value. It wasn't like I priced it cheap or anything like that. 
house needed updating. Yeah. It, needed, it needed carpets. It needed needed stuff. You know, it had carpets over the hardwood floors, and you know, needed paint. And the bathrooms and kitchens were decent, but you know, then you know, not brand new or nothing. You know, uh, nice clean house, but you know, nothing like you'd expect. All these things brand new. That's why they went crazy for it. And it wasn't nice lot, but uh, but uh, you, the you buyers feel, are out there. You feel do you feel like all that stuff's bounced back in like New York City as far as the uh, the buildings and what the city? Yeah, there doing? was there was some discounts in the city during COVID, but now it's all back again. Um, city's not what it was though. Um, I was in the city two Saturdays ago at uh, right. Tavern on the Green, at the restaurant right over Central Park, and uh, right. it was a good crowd in there, which was good to see. I mean, all the tables are full, and you know, but I mean, it wasn't like the bar area wasn't completely packed. It still wasn't. Like, you know, shoulder to shoulder the way some of these places have been, you know, prior COVID. Um, streets are still kind of empty. But a lot of the, a lot of restaurants and stuff, you know, closed and shut down. Because, you, know, you know, the rents you're paying. And they made these little sidewalk cafes with two tables in them. It's like, what the hell is turning two tables going to do? You know what I mean? It was just almost like a novelty thing. Because, you right. know, you're paying rent on this building. There's no way you're serving two or three tables on a sidewalk is paying the bills, you know. Um, True. You know, it's like, it was like kind of a, they just did it to do it type thing. And. Something was better than nothing, I guess, to keep the you know some money moving. But uh, it uh, it was bad. I mean, it's still bad. A lot of places closed up. But now, I mean, I got a guy that's looking to buy uh, nightclubs in Manhattan right now, and I kind of put the word out: Is anyone looking to sell? And there was, nope, everyone's looking to buy because they see it coming back. They see people itching to get back into the swing of things. So uh, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, down here, uh, craft beer's taking off really big in the North Carolina area. And uh, we've got bottle shops down here. And essentially what those are, they're just the places where the guys go and they procure craft beers from all around. And they actually sell them just from their bar. Okay. And we have bar taps with those types of beers in there. It's different than a standard bar. And I'll tell you what, those are the things that prosper during Coke because they got to stay open as opposed to other bars because they're retail sales. Okay. I'll yeah. sell their bars. Yeah. All right. They had so the loophole going. Are... They had the loophole. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I like it. I like it. We're cleaning up, yeah. right? We don't even worry about it. We're in here. We're cleaning up. Yeah. But uh, you know, that's something. I don't know if they have that up there your way. So they do. But, um, uh, the the beer distributors, the places that sell beer, have uh, kegs set up and they have the growlers. You come fill up your your growler. Um, right. Maybe you know, come with a milk jug and fill it up with uh, craft beer out of a tap. Um, right. They got that stuff going on. Um, really, there's no places that sell bottles to go. I mean, I'm sure there is, but it's not really a, a thing. We have a lot of breweries here. I mean, there's tons and tons of craft breweries, and you can go to their bar and they'll sell you, you know, their product type thing. But like, you know, my my family owns a little bar here in town, and you know, they were doing to-go liquor during COVID. Like, you know, you could order drinks to go type thing, which um, was kind of cool. I mean, I don't know. It's like you know, it's you know, you know, let's spend seven bucks on a beer where you can get to basically go to the store and buy a beer for a sure. dollar. Why would you, you know? But people are ordering dinner and then taking a like a beer to go type thing, you know, <laughs> you know, they're like, oh, you know, I'm gonna come in and order dinner and take out dinner and then yeah, well, you know, while we're here, give me two beers to go and you know, we won't drink it on the way home in the car. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. man, uh, if if you know if there's anything that I would take away from what we've done tonight, is like every time, man, you know, being able for me and you to relate and listen to where you're at and where I'm at. I know that uh, I'm just proud to be able to call you a friend and look at how I can keep providing value to you and just tell you how thankful I am you've given me an opportunity to talk and do this. I I, I enjoy doing this time and look through everything. Uh, I just wish you, you know, is there anything you want from me? Any questions you got? I appreciate that. Yeah, I feel the same. Uh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed to, again, have, have you in my life now for a year now. We've connected and... Uh, every time I see you, you know, fire me up and, uh, you know, cheerleader. It's always, always great to have your own personal cheerleader, you know, and, uh, I love it. I love it. I love how you build people up. I mean, it's just, it's a go given. That's what Chris Whitehead talks about all the time, right? Go out of your way right. to go, go build people up and give to them and give, you know, and that doesn't have to be financial. Just give them a smile, give them a pep talk, give them a little smack on the ass and tell them they're doing a good job, you know, cause it's, uh. It's important. It's important to build people up and make them feel good in this world where a lot of people are getting beat up between uh, all different stuff going on and you know a smile on the face and a pat on the back and you know you know give them a little little pep talk. It really means a lot to a lot of people. Man, to me, why it does. Can't we win yeah. Why can't we win? To, why can't we win together? All of us. 
What's oh. stopping us yeah. from winning together? Yeah. What is the point of us trying to hold each other back? Let's get yeah. up and let's inspire one yeah. another and go out and succeed. Do you know what yeah. you know what Wednesday is? A sales meeting day. You know why it's sales meeting day? Because you can't win unless you win on Wednesday. That's it. Winning on Wednesday. Winning on Wednesday. Let's I like it. I like it. I winning like on it. Wednesday. I like Let's it. Get I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I. You know what I've. You yep. know what I've started doing? I don't tell people goodbye anymore. I stopped telling people goodbye. This is no joke. I've implemented this in. I've changed my vocabulary. I tell people be successful. Every time one like of my it. guys leaves, I, I like say it. be successful. I like I it. I don't care. I like it. Goodbye. Man, yeah, there's nothing good about it. Yeah, there's no goodbye. There's nothing yeah. good about goodbye. It's not goodbye is a, <laughs> it's good that I don't get to see you anymore. That's not good. <laughs> I want to see you goodbye. again. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah I like I'm that. Glad we got to do this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know what? Yeah. It's a lot better for me to leave something in your brain to say be successful. Be successful. I like it. Go out and yeah. win. Yeah. Then I am just telling you, oh, you know what? It was great seeing you for yeah. a little yeah, bit yeah, today. Yeah. You yeah. take it easy. Yeah, goodbye. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. No, I love it. I love it. The language is everything. Language is everything. I, you know, I love one of the one of the big things that I've always loved, and it's a big thing in the apex world is that term. I appreciate you. When you walk up to someone and they give you some value, and you tell them, "Hey, listen, man, I appreciate you. I appreciate your your thoughts, your knowledge. I appreciate you pouring into me." Um, and I, I try and use that one more because I just feel like it's something that really just means something. Like you know, someone comes up and and you know and really just moves you a little bit, you know, I, I appreciate you, you know, it's like, I appreciate you in my life, I appreciate you in my life, you know, it's, uh, and let people know that, like, you know, just, we don't communicate the way we need to communicate with people, we don't tell them what we really feel, and I think that's important, you know, it's build people up, like I said, we all win it together, there's plenty for everybody, you know, we're better together than we are against each other, you know, real estate that's world, it. a lot of real estate agents, they cut each other's throat for deals, you know what, I can't list all the houses, I can't sell all the houses, we all need each other, and the more friends I have in the real estate world, the more successful I get because I know about listings and stuff that other people don't know about because of my friends. And they're like, hey, listen, I like dealing with you. Do you got anyone for this $600,000 house I just listed? You know what? I do. Boom. My person's in there first. Why? Because I have yep. a friend. I didn't make an enemy of someone that's my competition. They're my competition, but they're not really my competition because we all win together. You know, it's uh, man. Once you start realizing that, it's a different world. It, it might sound kind of arrogant. I hope it doesn't, but man, I, I don't have any competition. Yeah. The only competition I'm in every day is with myself. Oh, yeah. That's we're, it. We're our worst enemy. <laughs> That's it. It's, That's it's it. the truth. And, it is. And I, get, I work very hard consistently to make sure that, A, I am consistent with what I'm doing every day, and, B, that whenever I go out and I go to my office or I go see someone or Man, whether I go see my kid at a school function, whatever it is, man, my mindset's clear. I get up every day and say, I'm going to win today. And I before like my head hits the bed at night, I say, hell yes, I won today. I like it. Every day. I like it. Every day. It does not matter. I like That's it. why when I tell you, when we talk on the phone or when we're in a meeting or when we're talking with a group of people and they're lined up for what's going on and affecting them in their world, man, do not let it get you in a spot hmm. because the only way you're getting out of that spot is by you. Yep. I had a hard, hard talk with a guy that worked for me. I had to work on his mindset. And this is the truth. He was telling me that he was going to do this for his kid. He was going to get this lined up, get this done for his mama. I'm going to get this done. And I'm going to get my ex back. I'm going to get this done. And I'm going to get me a new Jeep. You don't even know. I got yeah. this going on. Yep. You know what I told him? I said, your mama don't matter. Your ex don't matter. That Jeep don't matter. And your kid does not matter because the only person that matters is you. Because if you don't do what you're supposed to do, they're already failing. Yep. And you failed them. The whole system is falling apart because you can't get out of your own way to see how you can succeed. Yep. And that's it. That is the basis for all of it. You Man, can't. I, we're going to win. Yep. If you Let's can't fill your own bucket, you can't you can't fill other people's bucket if your bucket's empty. And I, That's I, a fact. That, uh, I've heard that multiple times. And it just makes so much sense. If you're walking around with an empty bucket, how do you fill everyone else up? you got to fill up your bucket. You know, Put your mask on first. It's a big Ryan Stuman thing. You know what? Put your mask on first. You know, Before you can help anybody else, you gotta you got to take care of yourself. Make yourself strong. And then everyone, then you be the example for everyone around you. 
And that's that's what we well, get. That's the goal. And you take you, uh, Brian. You're inspirational to everybody for riding and doing what you're doing with that. Man, Appreciate you've already that. said that you're that you're going to finish this out by giving to such a great, great cause like Wounded Warriors. Yep. Get the heck out of here, man. Sure. Do you know? Do you know how proud I am right now? I appreciate like, that, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you right now, and I'm seeing a dynamic son of a gun. <laughs> I am so proud of you. I appreciate that, bro. I want you to know how much that your win when you do that ride is going to affect all those people. That's only 300 miles, right? Yeah. What is that to you? That's nothing to you. So I'm doing every, every month I'm doing 300 plus. But... And guess it. what? You're going to provide that benefit yep. for them. Man, yep. I wish and I hope at some point I'm able to do well enough where we can help more people. That's the goal. Because that's the whole goal for this. I want to yep. help more people. I don't know what it's going to take. Yep. I don't know what it's all going to look like in the end. But just like that just that, like that person that asked the question about that, man, the one thing that kind of stuck me up when we were talking about this, I didn't know we were taking questions from you. Man, I hope that individual, please reach out to me. I want to help you. That's if Nicole, I do yeah. Anything else you're not, Nicole, let me help you. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Nicole, I don't know if she's going to HVAC sales, but I'm sure she's got someone in mind. She does computers. <laughs> so, but, um, all right, brother. We're running into overtime here. I, oop, what happened? Something happened. It says I lost audio. Hmm. Something happened. There you go. Oh, it's back. There we go. It's always something. You it on me. <laughs> I said my, uh, yeah. Yeah, so my microphone will stop working for some reason. I don't know. Anyway, we're back. But, uh, yeah, we're hitting into overtime here, so uh, I want to uh, let you go get some sleep. We know we got a big day ahead of you tomorrow again of winning. But uh, I want to say I appreciate you so much for, for coming on. Um, you're just an inspiration, brother. Just, I mean, you're, I love it. I love it. I love, I love your energy. I love your passion. Um, I love your knowledge. So, and I love how much you just give, give, and give. So uh, I just commend you on that. And uh, I'm blessed to have you in my life and uh, looking forward to uh, going to MDM. Um, that's what my wedding is. Oh, that's your wedding. Ah. Oh. All right. So I'll have to make a trip down to North Carolina to see you. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> but are you, gonna be, are you going in May? Uh, I don't know. Because um, it's two weeks before MDM and I'm, I don't know. It's a lot. I've been traveling a ton and I've been, I'm trying to stay productive and not spend money and make money. <laughs> but I understand. You know the game, but we'll see. I, I don't know. We'll see. See what kind of closings happen before that. <laughs> can, I, can I say? Can I say one last thing? Please, to you? please, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for having me on again. Let me talk and uh, just take the time, man. If you ever want me to come back and do this again, I will definitely do definitely. it. This is the second time I've done this, and I've enjoyed it. Man, I enjoy doing this so much. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun to just try and give and whatever we can inspire, whoever we're going to inspire. And and again, uh, how can everyone find you? Um, reach out. You're on Facebook, uh, James Wilson. Uh, you yeah, on Instagram? James Wilson on Facebook. Yeah, James Wilson on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram. I don't get on Instagram a lot. They they say that that's good. I guess. <laughs> There's James Will James D Wilson seven two nine on Instagram. Okay. Uh, working on TikTok. Uh, but guys, keep an eye out for some great content that's going to be coming. I've got uh, a lot of videos that I think can help. Uh, and they're just not for service sales. They're for sales in general. Like I said, I've been in sales in all different industries, uh, all different disciplines, and uh, not only done well, I've managed a book of over uh, $23 million of business in one year. Uh, so it doesn't really matter what numbers you're looking at and what type of sale it is. If you need some help, let me know. Maybe I can pour into your cup. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, brother. I appreciate you. Um... Good stuff. God bless. Uh, congrats on the wedding coming Thanks. up. That's cool. That's a that's a big step right there. <laughs> and uh, it's not as bad as they say it is now. <laughs> so, uh, all right, brother. I feel like I, I'm a lucky guy. You're a lucky guy. With, with your your hey, personality, bro. nothing's going to get you down. You'll be good. <laughs> that's it. BLJ, if you need me, you call me, bro. All right, bro. Y'all have a great one. Thank you, everybody. Sounds good. I appreciate you all. Have a great night.